Hello there. This is Being God's Being the Servant channel. And today's lesson, we're in Job's chapters 25 through 28. Uh, if you're new to this, this is the Bible study channel where I go through the Bible book by book, chapter by chapter, and verse by verse as God commands it to be. Uh, God commands that the Bible is a preacher or teacher. You're to teach all of the Word, not just part of the Word. That way, nothing can be taken out of context. That's the meaning for it. Because there is a commandment from God that says you're not to add to or take away from the Word of God. When you don't teach all of the Word, then you're taken away from the Word of God. I started this channel because of that... Um, Sorry, I'm sliding the microphone around. Um, I started this channel because I've, you know, my entire life, I've already been on this earth over half a century. And I don't know of any church really that, well, and none that I've been to teaches all of the word. They have their preset messages so that they happy, happy, joy, joy feeling, but you don't learn anything else of, from God. You don't learn of you know God's wrath and that you are to fear the Lord, but also that's part of loving and respecting the Lord. Um, some of that's even in this lesson here, which still stands today. If you're new to this and you've just clicked, you know, you want to learn about the Bible more, I do recommend going to my channel and you know changing the uh changing around to go to the oldest video and start genesis chapter one and get caught up because there's a lot about the old testament that still is you know it's the, the rules for most of the old testament still applies today and I know so many people I've talked to where they say, well, that's Old Testament, that's irrelevant. We're under New Testament. And that is a lie. I mean, well, te technically not. We are under the New Testament, but we're also still under most of the Old Testament because Jesus taught from the Old Testament and he always referenced back to those teachings. When he said he finished the law, the law is five parts that he finished. One is circumcision, uh, dietary, second, blood sacrifices to cover sins, third, being stoned to death for sinning, fourth, and then the uh, strict laws of the Sabbath. That's the fifth one. But pretty much everything else still stands. The rules for woman, the rules for man, the rules for society. You know, even the rules for the judicial system. Uh, most of everything, especially here in America, the original, you know, constitution and the uh, rules for the judicial system is based off of the Old Testament. But, yeah, so... It's uh, It hurts me to see so many people misled. I heard one preacher actually finally say it, say the, uh, I guess the new saying is say the quiet part out loud. And it's something I've been talking about for a, while, for a long time now, that there's so many people in churches today that are lost and don't even know it. And this preacher was saying that he first believed that it was at least half that are in churches today with the inadequacy of the proper teachings that are lost and don't know it. But he said that, you know, as the, the more churches he'd been to, he now says that it's more than likely probably 75% or more are lost going to church thinking that they're saved. And I would probably say it's even closer to 80 to 90% of that. The reason being is most people are under the belief that all you have to do is believe that Jesus is the Son of God and that he was born of a virgin, 
uh, died for our sins and rose from the dead. You know, in the story, you know, the gospel of Christ. And he says, as long as you believe that, you're saved. That's what, they, that's what they're taught. If you believe that God is real, creation is real, Jesus is real, and his life and everything of it, that he's the son of God, then you're saved because the Bible says, he who believeth in me shall have everlasting life. But the teachings of that is he who follows and obeys. And you know this easily by Satan knows for a fact that Jesus is the Son of God. Satan knows for a fact that he was born of a virgin, that he walked this earth. He walked this earth as human, suffered and died on the cross for all mankind, all, all man's sin. And rose again on the third day. He knows that God is real and God is the creator of everything because God created Lucifer, which later is now Satan. So Satan knows for a fact that all this is real, but he's not going to be in God's kingdom. He's going to be in the lake of fire for all eternity at the end of it all. So there's a lot more to it than just believing it's a, it means to follow and obey. That's why Christ says, pick up your cross and follow me. Because it doesn't matter if it's Old Testament and New Testament, God calls and Jesus calls for obedience. Hence the name of my channel being God's obedient servant because we're to serve the Lord, we're to be his servant because he is our master and we're to obey. We're to live life how he tells us to live. We're to dress how he tells us to dress. You know, our work, our jobs that he wants us to do, we're to do what he wants us to do, not what we want to do. And it's like God put it on my heart to, <clears throat> you know, make this channel. And so this is all God's caused me to do. And my life has been a lot better ever since I started obeying. I was like, okay, that's that simple. Then you go back to the teachings of um, the, uh, was it a, a general? I think it was a general. It was a, a, a huge warrior, huge leader, whatever. He ended up with leprosy. And he went to, uh, I can't remember which which priest it was or prophet. I'm horrible with names. But he was told a simple task is to go dip himself in the River Jordan seven times. If I remember correctly, it's seven times. He thought it was ludicrous. Like the, the Jordan River is like the Jordan River is known as a, it's a dirty river. You know, nothing, nothing nice about it. You know, he's like, you know, there's nothing nice about the Jordan River, nothing fancy. But he was like, well... And he went and told a uh, squire or something like that, armor bearer. And they said to him, well, if they told you to go fight this enemy, you'd be glad to go do that. You, you know, if they told you to go climb this mountain, risking death, you'd gladly do that, wouldn't you? Because yeah, he goes, well, what's wrong with just doing what you're told? It's simple. So he did what he was told. He said, fine. He went and dipped himself in the Jordan River seven times seven times when he came up his leprosy was healed and his skin was you know, made new just like a baby now, that's how simple it is God does not ask us to do stuff complicated or hard following God and doing his will is not complicated he doesn't ask us to do much at all it's very simple things and so, but he wants us to obey. So, you know, changing our lifestyle, that's hard enough by itself. Because God says if it's worldly, it's not godly. If it's godly, it's not worldly. And this is the reason why I say the things that I say and I teach what I teach. Is because this is what the Bible says and this is what the Bible's meaning is. And so... I'm on enough of that rant right there. I'd be on the, I could be on that area all night long. And we have four chapters to read. 
They're not long chapters. I think the first chapter is only six verses. But if you have been following along, the book of Job is, you know, one of, it's a lesson for us more, something Job had to go through so that we would have a lesson and that no matter what the world does to you, you stay true to God and God will reward you for it. Life's going to be hard. Life's going to get hard. Now, the big difference between Old Testament and New Testament is in Old Testament that you were, there was a promise that you would be rewarded for being obedient. On earth, you would be rewarded. And with New Testament is your rewards will be in heaven, not on earth. That's why we're to build rewards in heaven, not on earth. And we build rewards in heaven by doing what we're told. We witness to people. Um, you know, we try to help save the lost. That's what part of witnessing is. That's what this kind of is, is kind of witnessing. And, you know, you're not going to reach everybody. But we are to try. But if people don't want to hear God's word, then the, uh, Jesus even says, do not cast pearls upon swine. You know, if people don't want to hear the word, then fine. He says, okay, have a nice day. And you, you move on. So some you know, you're not going to be able to save everybody. A lot of people don't want to be saved. They like living in sin, doing sinful things, makes them feel good for a little while. It's the long run is where they suffer. <clears throat> but yeah. Anyways, we'll go ahead and get started into this lesson. And so we've had these friends of Job talking down to him, saying that he must be sinning because that's the only reason why bad things would be happening to him. And, you know, we know this for a fact that that's not so. Because, you know, even in Genesis... God's, you know, when Adam and Eve were cast out of the garden, it says trials and tribulations will be your future. He said even thorns, thistles, and pestilence will be added to the earth to increase your sorrow. Since you want to live under sin, this, you know, being living under sin is very painful. And so even though today, if you're a Christian, you don't live under sin, well, your, your body's still in sin, but your spirit isn't. And so your body will still endure hard hardship, hard times, and you know trials and tribulations. But as the Bible says, as long as you endure, you will be rewarded in the end. But you have to endure. You can't turn back to the world and tell the Holy Spirit to kiss off and keep your name in the book of life. It's not going to happen. That's blaspheming the Holy Spirit. When you tell God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit to get out of your life, you don't want it, you want to go back to the world, you have free will to do such. God will let you. He will not force you to stay. But, you know, there is a punishment that comes with that. So, to those people, beware. That's the unforgivable sin is blaspheming the Holy Spirit. That's when the Holy Spirit tells you to do things and you tell them no. You refuse to obey. You refuse to repent. You refuse to turn from your wicked ways. You inst instead, you know, you embrace the world and you run towards the world and run away from God. God will let you do such, but your name will be blotted out of the book of life. If it's in there to begin with. So. Anyways, uh, as I said I can be on. I can be talking about that stuff for forever and a day there. But you know, you've got three friends telling him he must be doing wrong, and he did nothing wrong for these things to happen to him. And so here it is again. He's been speaking on that he's done nothing, and this, that, and the other. And please show proof. If there's proof, if I've done wrong, please show it to me so I can repent. 
but he doesn't know what to repent from because he's did no wrong. And, but yeah, so he does stay true to God, spoiler alert, and God rewards him for it. Because Satan says, you know, let me touch him and let me harm him and he will curse you and turn from you. And God says, okay, because I have faith in Job that he will not do those things. And Job doesn't. But yeah, so let's go ahead and get started in this lesson. And uh, But Job's answers will be, it's not going to be all in one reading because he has an answer, then he has a parable, and then it says continues on another parable. So it, Job's answers to all this will be broken up because it was just, it'd, it'd be probably about two hours of reading if I stayed on all of that with Job only after this. So, but this right here is just verse, you know, chapter 25 right here, these six verses. So let's go ahead and get started here. <clears throat> and uh, so, yeah, chapter 25, verse 1. Then answered Bildad the Shuhite and said, Dominion and fear are with him. He maketh peace in his high places. Is there any number of his armies? And upon whom doth not his light arise? How then can man be justified with God? Or how can he be clean that is born of a woman? So this is you know, known in Old Testament, teaching in New Testament still. If you're born of woman on this earth, you are born in sin. You're a natural born sinner. Um, of course, when you're a small child, you're not at the age of accountability yet. So if something was to happen to you, you're a straight ticket to heaven. God's kingdom. Um, you know, you cannot be held accountable. The Bible even says, you know, you'll be judged on what you know. So you cannot be held accountable of things that you do not yet know of regardless of who your parents or grandparents or anyone thing else is. That's the only thing I have in any any comfort with these abortions that's going on worldwide today is those babies have a straight sh sh ticket to heaven. You know, they of course had horrible parents and a horrible mother that would murder them. It says, but they had a straight ticket to heaven and because you know, the, those uh, people doing abortions will be accursed because they are harming the innocent. And as Jesus said, it's better for those um, better for those to have a millstone tied around their neck and cast into the depths of the sea than to harm an innocent. And multiple things where it says that, but that's one of the ones that sticks out the most. Because even Jesus knew of the depths of the sea that you would be crushed to death before you would drown. Because the millstone weighed about a ton. About 2,000 pounds. It would sink you quickly. And you'd be in the crushing depths and the darkness of the ocean before you had time to drown. You would sink that fast. So, you know, God and Jesus already knew of this. Of course, you know, because they... They wrote the rules for physics, gravity, you know, everything else on earth. So, but yeah, that's just, that's the only thing that brings me any comfort to the abortion that's happening. You know, it's like them children will never suffer the world and they straight to heaven. They're, you know, they're with God already. But anyways, continue on here. Uh, verse 5, Behold, even to the moon, and it shineth not, yea, the stars are not pure in his sight. How much less man that is a worm? Oh, I'm sorry. Let me reread that because it's like I, had, I saw the comment there. How much less man that is a worm and the son of man, which is a worm? So I'm saying like, you know, the Bible teaches that, you know, no, you know, even the best human on earth in the whole history of the earth 
you know, being obedient to God. And there's been some that's so perfect that they didn't. There was two of those that has that did not die on earth. They were perfect in their walk in the Lord. And they, you know, they said they did not die on earth. Enoch and Elijah. And I, I, I mentioned this before. You got Eliza and Elijah. It's one of those. <laughs> and the other one was the one that received his blessings because he was there when the other uh, ascended, you know, were taken in a whirlwind in a chariot of fire, taken to heaven instead of dying on earth. So, I mean, even with those two being perfect in their walk on the earth, God says, you know, even the best of us is nothing but filthy rags in the eyes of the Lord. The saying, so God is so pure, his light shines so bright that even the stars are not pure in his sight. So this is one of the people telling Job that he must have done wrong. But these people know the Bible. They know God's word and they know God's teachings. It says, but they don't know Job. They clearly are, you know, they're, they're judging him. They're unjustly judging him. Because they keep saying that he had done wrong somewhere to cause this to him. So this is the part where it says uh, we're not to unjustly judge. We are to know a tree by the fruit it bears, but we are not to unjustly judge. Because if we judge unjustly, then we will be judged unjustly as well. Judge not or ye will, or ye will be judged. Anyways, let's continue on here. Chapter 26. But Job answered and said, How hast thou helped him that is without power? How savest thou the arm that hath no strength? How hast thou counseled him that hath no wisdom? And how hast thou plentiful, uh, plentifully declared the thing as it is? To whom hast thou uttered words? And whose spirit came from thee? Dead things are formed from under the waters and the inhabitants thereof. Hell is naked before him, and destruction hath no covering. He stretcheth out the north over the empty place, and hangeth the earth upon nothing. He bindeth up the waters in his thick clouds, and the cloud is not rent under them. He holdeth back the face of his throne, and spreadeth his cloud upon it. He hath compassed the waters with bounds, until the day and night come to an end. The pillars of heaven tremble and are astonished at his reproof. He divideth the sea with his power, and by his understanding he smite, uh, smiteth through the proud. And remember, being a proud person is actually a sin. So that's what he means right there. He's going to smite it through the proud. Uh, verse 13. By his spirit he hath garnished the heavens. His hand hath formed the crooked serpent. Lo, these are parts of his ways, but how little a portion is heard of him. But the thunder of his power, who can understand? Chapter 27. Moreover, Job continued his parable and said, As God liveth, who hath taken away my judgment? And the Almighty, who hath vexed my soul? All the while my breath is in me, and the Spirit of God is in my nostrils. My lips shall not speak wickedness, nor my tongue un utter deceit. God forbid that I should justify you. Till I die, I will not remove my mine integrity from me. My righteousness I hold fast and will not let it go. My heart shall not reproach me so long as I live. Let mine enemy be as the wicked, and he that riseth up against me as the unrighteous. 
For what is the hope of the hypocrite, though he hath gained when God taketh away his soul? So that still applies today. Even Jesus says, you know, what good for it is man to inherit the world if he loses his soul? And Jesus also says, you know, do not fear the man that can kill the body. Fear the one that can kill the soul. So I said, these rules, as I said, like, you know, Jesus taught from the Old Testament. You know, there, the New Testament does have some things in it because the law, you know, the way the, the law has been, you know, uh, Jesus said he came here to end the law. I'm getting tongue twisted there trying to get the word out. You know, so some things have changed. You know, it's, uh, but for the most part, the rules of society, woman, man, woman, child, servants, masters, all that stuff, all is in Old Testament. It's also the same in New Testament. Uh, let's continue on. Will God hear his cry when trouble cometh upon him? So that's another thing was like, uh, which says, uh, it's also a New Testament. It says, unless you are of him, he does not hear your prayers. He does not hear the prayers of the ungodly, the wicked. So, same thing here as verse 9. So, now, verse 10. Will he del delight himself in the Almighty? Will he always call upon God? I will teach you by the hand of God that which is with the Almighty will I not conceal. Behold, all ye yourselves have seen it. Why then are ye thus altogether vain? This is the portion of a wicked man with God and the heritage of oppressors which they are received of the Almighty. I'm sorry, did I say it right? which they shall receive of the Almighty. Yeah, sorry. Uh, verse 14. If his children be multiplied, it is for the sword, and his offering shall not be satisfied with bread. I'm sorry, and his offspring shall not be satisfied with bread. So if that's a little confusing, for a wicked person to have children, like I said before, even in New Testament, you know, your children will not answer for your sins. And you will not answer for the sins of your father. But your father's sins can affect your life. And you yourself, your sins can affect your children's life. So this is Old and New Testament. This does exist. So he's coming here it says, you know, for a wicked person, you know, his children will be, uh, his children be multiplied. It is for the sources, meaning that that, they will, you know, die by the sword. They will be killed. You know, they, they will not prosper. And it says their offspring should not be satisfied with bread. That means like, you know, that they, they'll they never be happy. Until they have the Lord in them, they will never be happy. But normally the offspring of the wicked will also be wicked because they are not taught godly things. This is why the Bible also teaches those who raise their children in the ways of the Lord, they will not they, they will not part far from it. There's you know, I was blessed enough to be raised in that environment with um, godly grandparents, godly grandmother, and stuff that you know did Bible studies with me and everything else. My parents, even though they were kind of hypocrites they still believed in God's word and raised me in church and stuff like that. So I'm not saying the church, you can't get saved in a church learning God's word and stuff because you can be saved anywhere. You can be saved in your car, in a ditch, in a restaurant. doesn't matter. You can be saved anywhere. It says, but just because you can be saved there does not make that a, a holy place. Because it could be a den of vipers. And that's what Jesus calls a place of hypocrisy. It's a den of vipers. Let's continue on here. Verse 15. 
Those that remain of him shall be buried in death, and his widow shall not weep. Though he heap up silver as the dust, and prepare raiment as the clay. So these are the people like, you know, you have these multi giant corporations today, these multi-billion dollar corporations. You know, they have money galore. It's kind of like false for them. That's why Jesus says it's easier for a rich, uh, for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to get into heaven. Because people that are rich, normally they desire money. They desire money more than anything else on earth. And that will be their rewards. They will not have any rewards in heaven because they can't be saved. Because they, being saved means you are commanded to live a humble life. If you've been blessed financially, you're to help those who haven't been blessed. So, you're actually commanded by God to spread the wealth. But you're not to, you know, you're not to help the wicked. So, you got to remember that too. Because if you help the wicked, then you're supporting the wicked. So, you can be held guilty of the sins of the wicked. So, you know, <laughs> as I said, this is why it's so crucial to know God's word and study it that way. You're not easily misled. Let's continue on here. 17. He may prepare it, but the just shall put put it on. So he's talking about, you know, everything that a rich man buildeth up and everything else and all his raiment that he's, you know, built for himself, that he'll lose it and the just shall inherit it. The godly. That's what I'm talking about, the just. And, you know, you got the hypocrites, the, the wicked, and then you have the just. Uh, let's finish this and it says and the innocent shall divide the silver he buildeth his house as a moth and as a booth that the keeper maketh now I will have to say I don't understand this section here this uh, verse 18 uh, it's like he buildeth his house as a moth the only thing I know about a moth is if you touch a moth and you and you get the dust of a moth off its wings, it can't fly. It's sure to die if you you know you you handle a moth and get the dust of its wings you know, on your fingers and stuff. It actually hinders its ability to fly. So unless it's something like that, because a moth is very fragile, and a, a moth will head towards flame, light, and to the point it'll keep going to it till it kills it. You know, a moth will fly into a fire and die. They're not very bright. So maybe it's something of that. And the part of it says, uh, and as a booth that the keeper maketh. Um, possibly it could be the booth, like something that you put your clothing in because moth, the moths will destroy clothing. They didn't have cedar chips. They didn't, well, they learned about having, you know, closets made of cedar that kept moths away because moths don't, do not like, you know, most insects can't stand cedar. They can't stand the smell of it. Like even dogs and stuff, they don't like a dog house full of cedar chips. They just, you know, animals, they don't, they don't like cedar. And so... Maybe that's the type of booth that they're talking about. You know, you, you put if you put your stuff, you know, your raiment in a booth and it's full of moths and stuff, that the moths will destroy it. So you, you know, it's all for naught in a sense. But maybe, as I said, I don't really understand it too much. But you know, maybe if that's what it means. But let's continue on, verse nineteen. The rich man shall lie down, but he shall not be gathered. He openeth his eyes, and he is not. That means he is no more. He, he no longer exists. One day, it's like he'll be nothing. You know, when he passes away, because, you know, his, his rewards are on earth. He built no rewards in heaven. So even in the Old Testament and New Testament, it talks about the same things here. Uh, verse 20. Terrors take hold on him as waters... A tempest stealeth him away in the night. The east wind carrieth him away, and he departeth. And as a storm 
hurleth him out of his place. For God shall cast upon him and not spare. He would fain flee out of his hand. Men shall clap their hands at him and shall hiss him out of his place. That's a very deep meaning right there in like 23. It's like, you know, you know, first like, you know, people will applaud you and then cast you out. That's how, that's how the wicked will be treated. Um, you know, it's like politicians that go with the leaf, whichever way the wind blows the leaf. That's, that's the thing, you know, that they, they lie constantly to get elected. And they just keep lying. They go keep going back and forth. You know, very, a lot of crooked politicians do this. And, you know, sad to say, you know, it's uh, the ones on the left are very famous for this. They, you know, they, whichever, way, whichever way the wind blows, that's, that's what they, uh, they're upholding. It's like, you know, okay, prime example. You have, um, you know, this whole, you know, Israel and Palestine thing going on and so they support Palestine but also support Israel the Democrats do and the people on the left that normally votes Democrats are now hissing them out of their place they're no longer supporting them. it says wait a minute no 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 you have to curse Israel and only side with Palestine and a lot of the Democrats are not willing to do that so they're losing support you know as i said it's the same things because you know when you're not when you're being when your whole existence is not rooted in something sturdy and strong and godly you know the world will one day they'll like you and the next they'll destroy you it's kind of like you know if you're from the movie gladiator where it's talking about, you know, the, the new Caesar, you know, the mob applaud him. He, he, uh, he understood the mob, you know, food and games, food and games, keep the mob happy and they'll keep him in power. They won't go against him. It says, but he went against their champion and he did a, th you know, thumbs down to Maximus and then the mob turned against Caesar because you know they, they went they went against somebody that was rooted in their beliefs and since see the Caesar wasn't he would just he would flip flop wherever just you know but yeah kind of same thing but anyways let's continue on here chapter 28 almost at 40 minutes here so I'm gonna go ahead and read through this <clears throat> Um, I think there's like 29 verses in this. Anyway, surely there is a vein for the silver and a place for gold where they find it. Iron is taken out of the earth and brass is molten out of the stone. He setteth an end to darkness and searcheth out all perfection, the stones of darkness and the shadow of death. The flood breaketh out from the in, uh, inhabitant, even the waters forgotten of the foot. They are dried up. They are gone away from men. As for the earth, out of, out of it cometh bread, and under it is turned up as it were fire. So for those that don't know, wheat is where you get bread from. I have to say this nowadays because literally we, we've watched videos of people didn't know that you can pick fruit from a tree and eat it. I'm like, do you not understand where food comes from? So I venture to say there's probably some people out there that don't know that wheat is what you grind into flour to make bread. And wheat is a type of grass. The wheat is actually the seed of a type of grass that grows really tall. But yeah, but that's how it's harvested is the seeds from the wheat, you know, the wheat uh, <laughs> and grind it into flour to make bread. So 
I just wanted to say that because it's, I know some people probably get a kick out of that. But, but yeah, so most of your food comes from the earth. Now, I know some people's like, well, duh. And I'm like, what well, I said, like, there got some people that don't know that. Like, the one woman says, did you know? I can't, it's like, she, she literally is like, am I the only one? I can't be the only one that didn't know that, you know, I have a lemon tree and I didn't know. I had that thought. She thought you had to go to the store to buy lemons to use because there was more to it than just plucking them and eating them or you know, using them from the tree. This is my whole thing about why is healthy uh, fresh fruits and vegetables so expensive? Because all you do is you pluck them, you put them in a basket, you may rinse them off or something. Sometimes they don't. And then they're taken to the grocery store and put on the shelf. That's it. That's their whole thing. But canned goods, which are cheaper, have to be processed. I mean, the beans are already done. The peas are already, you know, uh, the shells already opened up. The peas are already gathered out. They're cooked and everything else. They're already prepared in a liquid with water and salt. Uh, purified, boiled, and everything else, and canned, and then put in a can, put a label on it, then put on the shelf. And it's cheaper to do that than buy fresh that's not processed. I don't understand it, but the simple fact is, if it's healthier for you, they charge more for it, even though it's not justified. And all these people will suffer the lake of fire for doing so. So remember, do not seek vengeance, because vengeance belongs to the Lord. You just live your life the best you can. That's all you can do. But we got to stay godly in all of it, too. But anyway, let's continue on here. Uh, verse 6. The stones of it are the place of sapphires, and it hath dust of gold. There is a path which no fowl knoweth, and which... The vulture's eye hath not seen. So even these people back then knew that vultures could see very far away. They literally, I think they can see, you know, something dying or dead from a mile up. You know, <laughs> it's like, you know, the birds, the, when they fly, they fly straight. So they fly over everything. So even paths that you can't take, they've flown over and seen. So, you know, that's what they're talking. He's talking about God right here. You know, this is what God knows. God knows past that, you know, birds, you know, fowls are not knoweth, and he's seen things that vultures can't, you know. So, he's, of course, if you didn't pick that up by now, he's speaking about, you know, God and what God can and can't do and, you know, stuff like that. Verse 8, the lion's whelps have not trodden it, nor the fierce lion passed by it. He putteth forth his hand upon the rock. He overturneth the mountains by the roots. He cutteth out rivers among the rocks, and his eye seeth every precious thing. He bindeth the floods from overflowing, and the thing that is hid bringeth he forth to light. But where shall wisdom be found, and where is the place of understanding? Man knoweth not the price thereof, neither is it found in the land of the living. The depth saith, it is not in me, and the sea saith, it is not with me. It cannot be gotten for gold, neither shall silver be weighed for the price thereof. It cannot be valued with the gold of of Ophir with the precious onyx or the sapphire. The gold and the crystal cannot equal it, and the exchange of it shall not be for jewels of fine gold. No mention shall be let's see, read that again. Verse 18. No mention shall be made of coral or of pearls, for the price of wisdom is above rubies. So, of course, you haven't gotten this by now. Most people know this when you've lived long enough. Wisdom and knowledge is far more valuable than any possession on earth. 
you know, sometimes I used to make say this joke. Actually, I think a lot of times I meant it at the time, where it's like I was kind of so upset because like I've been blessed with a lot of knowledge on building and fixing things and stuff like that. You know, if I can build homes, I can build cars, you know, whatever. I can do electrical plumbing, it doesn't matter. I make furniture, blah, 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 whatever, it doesn't matter. I'd be able to build computers, you know, networks and all this other stuff. I just have this inner knowledge. God gifted me with this inner knowledge to know all this stuff. It says, but I've been poor most of my life. And I kind of said it one time. It's like, it's like, Lord, I tell you right now, I'd rather be rich and dumb than smart and poor. And in some, time, in some ways, I do mean that because even though you're not wise, when you're rich, you don't have any financial worries. And it's like, you know, what, what, it's like if I had money, I wouldn't need to know how to build a house. I'd hire someone else to do it, you know. But I'm also a disabled person, disabled veteran. So that's why, you know, I've been falling into a hard times because I never got to have a family, no children. I'm single. You know, I've been divorced, you know, because people don't want to stay a part of your life when life has been bad to you. Like here, the, th the friends of uh, Job, they don't want to be, they're talking bad to Job because, you know, they don't want Job's curse to come upon them. You know, they think he's under a curse. And so, it's like, when people have hard times, you know, everyone else they normally flee. And so I'm sitting here alone, and there's things I want to get done, but I don't have money to hire people to help me out. I know what to do. But, yeah, so it's like I'd, it's like I'd rather... <laughs> And sometimes in life, I'd rather I'd rather be dumb and rich than smart and poor. Because, like right now, even though I got all this knowledge, I can't use it. I can't do for myself because of my physical limitations. So yeah. Anyways, you know, I know I ain't the only one that goes to this exact same thing, but wisdom is different than knowledge. Wisdom is the ability to figure things out and understand things. Knowledge is, you know, what comes from, you know, learning things. So there is a difference between them, but, you know. But wisdom is very, very, uh, it's priceless. Not as priceless as God and heaven, you know, getting to God's kingdom, but you have to be, wise enough to understand God's word so that you know his meaning so you can be blessed by God. But yeah, anyways, let's continue on. Verse 19. The topaz of Ethiopia shall not equal it, neither shall it be valued with pure gold. Whence then cometh wisdom? And where is the place of understanding? Seeing it is hid from the eyes of all living and kept close uh, close from the fowls of the air. Destruction and death say, we have heard the fame thereof with our ears. God understandeth the way thereof, and he knoweth the place thereof. For he looketh to the ends of the earth and seeth under the whole heaven to make the weight for the winds and to, and, I'm sorry, and he weigheth the waters by measure. When he made a decree for the for the rain and a way for the lightning of the th and of the thunder, then did he see it and declare it, he prepared it, yea, and searched it out. And unto man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. So that part we're still under today is the very one. So all led up to that one part right there. And it says, you know, behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. So understanding the word of God means you have to depart from evil. And to fear the Lord's wrath and wanting to serve him, that is wisdom. 
This is, you know, some of the stepping stones to inherit the kingdom of the Lord. It says, but yeah, the difference is because you had law in the Old Testament, the big difference between Old Testament and New Testament. New Testament, we're under grace, so anybody can now be saved. And Old Testament, you had to convert to Judaism. You had to become a Jew and obey the law. That's how, you know, that's the main difference between Old and New Testament. But anyway, that's the end of this lesson. And just past 50 minutes, I was watching a little timer. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this lesson here. I try not to have these lessons too long, but I got long-winded in the beginning and other parts and stuff. And I just kind of talk about things that, you know, I feel in my heart that God wants me to talk about. So, like I always say, remember to pray. Prayer is, you know, you're, the way you communicate with the Lord. That's how you commune with the Father there. You have to pray. You have to talk to Him. The Holy Spirit will answer you. Sometimes God will answer you. Sometimes Jesus will answer you. They're all three in one. That's the Trinity. You know, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. Jesus and God are the same, so that's the Father. The Word is biblical scriptures and the Holy Spirit. When you, these three are one, these three bear record. So, but we got to pray. We got to pray for ourselves. We got to pray for the lost. Especially pray, pray for the lost. Because, I mean, that's the whole reason for witnessing is to try to save the lost. So we got to pray that, you know, when we do speak to them, that their hearts will be open to God's word. And hopefully, you know, if God can creep, you know, get in there and stuff and help, you know, soften their heart and speak to them more, that he can lead them to him. Our job is to plant the seed. Our job is not to do the saving. That's what God does. Salvation is the Lord's. Ours is the gospel. And so, as I said, I'm going to end this lesson here. So until next time, God bless, good night, and goodbye.